Good morning and welcome to Normandy. Today we will be taking a closer look at the Normandy terrain and we will do a short flyover of the area and take a look. Uh, thank you, ATC. We will be heading towards the uh, Cherbourg area first and then we will go to the rest of the area. We will also be taking a proper look at some of the things that you can see around Normandy or I haven't really mapped them out so we'll just gonna take them as they go. As you can see the airfields are era appropriate and uh, if you are gonna do something on the on this map you might just want to pick up the assets pack. Now when I was buying this I couldn't get the module for some reason all Rather, the modules were purchased, but I couldn't get it in a package. So, But the package deal is usually the better one. So if the package deal is available to you, you should pick that one, definitely. Obviously, the assets pack contains a lot of ground vehicles, a lot of uh, black guns and stuff like that. We are ready and are waiting for permission to go. It should be noted that while the um, most of the airstrip may look like dirt or grass or similar, it seems like Modern Fighters does not have that much of a problem taking off or moving from them. Now, I would suspect that the primary problem on these airstrips are going to be stuff like... Um, Distance. I don't think most of the runways are going to be long enough. So we have a ship currently on our way towards Sherbrooke. We will be heading for breakpoint one. And looks like that ship doesn't like us very much because they are popping a bunch of flak our direction. Now this is actually one of the nice things about the asset pack and one of the things I really want them to add to DCS as a whole. More flak guns. Flak and AAA guns. Currently the short range is just not up to par. Now we have Cheerbug down here and we are gonna try and make sure that we are not shut down by that one. Cheerbug was of course a major objective during the D-Day landings but they didn't really manage to uh, do that properly. Uh, Cherbourg was not captured until later in the war and I think actually was put out of commission by the defenders in an act of scorched earth. I might be mixing them up because I'm not... R when it comes to history my knowledge about the battles in Normandy 1944 is actually one of my weaker ones. I do prefer stuff like the Channel Dash and uh, the Mediterranean Front, stuff like that. Mo stuff that involves a lot of airplanes and ships. Of course, one could argue that Normandy did indeed include a lot of ships and stuff like that. Either way, we are currently flying over the hedges of Normandy and you can see how exactly how many of them there are. Of course, this proved a uh, really annoying thing for the uh, Americans, British, Canadians, and other allies as they landed in this general vicinity. Radar shows nothing different, and we will be passing first breakpoint soon ish. We have. Uh, this flight should be about 30 minutes, give or take, but it might end up being shorter than that, so... But currently there is not much to speak about. Either way, I can imagine that flying ground support missions on this map would actually be kind of fun. You have to 
there's not a lot of forests and stuff like that. You would actually have to find what you are shooting at. There's also a lot of sea room where naval maneuvers can take place, and that is also pretty nice. But one thing that actually stands out is that this map is actually fairly small. You don't think about it. But um, I'm basically going to be traversing about one third of the map in this flyover. And that is actually, for a DCS map, fairly small. So we can only hope that with the Dover and uh, Channel map, that map might either extend the Normandy map or otherwise make it more interesting. Ah, uh, just in kidding. We're keeping our eyes open. Many rivers down there, and uh, rather a river. And uh, a not so large lake. Either way, the water looks fairly good, as does the small towns. I mean, one of the things I must say I like is how the, the cityscapes, or the towns and villages, really feel properly merged into the terrain as a whole. They don't seem separate, in a way. They f actually feel like they should be the way they are. I don't know how historically accurate this terrain is, but at this point in time they do not have really have any problems convincing me. Of course we are taking the fast tour at Mach 0 0.8, so uh, we, I'll try not to miss anything obvious. on the next breakpoint and one of the larger airstrips down here. Even this one looks more like it's made out of dirt and stuff like that rather than concrete. Interestingly enough, my performance seems to tank the closer to the ground I go, so we'll try to gain some altitude, see if that helps it more. If so, that is actually a very interesting thing, and not really one I expected. I have to say that if I expected anything, it would be that my performance would be worse at higher altitudes. That doesn't appear to be. Or we just hit an unfortunate snag. So we are coming up on the coast, right here. And uh, hopefully we should be able to see the beachheads, but no promises on that. When it comes to places that are actually recognizable, I would suspect that Point the Hook is actually the area where we can expect to actually have some recognition. This area is also pretty littered with airstrips. So any campaign taking place here will have many of them to choose from, but they are also pretty clustered, which is actually very interesting. So we have some factories near a village, right down there, we have an airstrip, we got a large river up ahead. Heading for the next breakpoint, three zero kilometers. I honestly do not know how much flying I will be doing, but the money I used to purchase this map was more of a windfall, so it was money that I otherwise wouldn't have, and for that reason, I don't really feel bad about spending it recklessly. Either way, the World War II pack was 
very much worth it. But uh, I am disappointed that other people require it for my missions. I would prefer to be that way that only the mission creator would require the package and no one else. Looks like a lighthouse. Couple of ponds. Larger river with a bridge. We haven't really passed the waypoint yet. Still uh, about 10 kilometers to go. And as you can see, there's uh, just a whole lot of beach here. Alright, we are coming around for another pass. Coming up on the beaches. About 3 0 to the, our next objective. And of course, we have most of the coastline right here. Of course, a very nice coastline if you want to plan any invasion scenarios. There are plenty of ships if you want to do that, and I'm actually tempted to do one right now, but more of a modern one, like modern interdiction in a third world, world country, or similar to that. Two zero and count. I think we should uh, get a little bit lower here. I don't know if there is this much beach close to the actual Normandy, but if that's the case, then I'm not surprised. And once I went down on lower altitudes, my performance went into the gutter. We are good on fuel. And closing in on the next breakpoint. Cliffs and bunkers? That might actually be point to hook then. I'm not actually sure. We we'll also have more cliffs down here. Actually, I'm fairly convinced that's not point to hook since point to hook was in proximity to Omaha, and I don't think that is where Omaha is on the map. But like I said, my skill levels in applications on 1944 Normandy is non-existent and this isn't a video where we point out all the historically accurate stuff on the map. Looks like we have some... Uh, that actually looks like there are bunkers in the... in the mountain there, but I, I could be wrong. We could of course take another path and have a look, but we are closing up on last breakpoint then we need to return to base soon slowing 
come down for a wee bit. Wow, this this airstrip is really asking for a bombardment. Alright, so I might actually have miscalculated my position here. And that actually me might mean that those were the actual beaches. Since I thought I was way on my way to the Chiaboud Peninsula and I'm not even really, I'm not even close. I mean it's twenty-five kilometers from here. So that might have actually been one of the beaches. Let's see here. Utah and Omaha should have been the mo the ones towards the um Chiaburg Peninsula in the order of Utah, Omaha, Sword and Juno. With of course Sword and Juno being the Commonwealth beaches. Huh. I'll have to look that up once we land. Either way, I think we got the Chiaburg Peninsula up ahead. So, starting to slow down might be an idea, since we are cruising here at Mach 0.8. We have not wasted any fuel, or rather we have burned a lot of fuel flying this, but I'm actually surprised at how much fuel I actually got left, considering the speed we have been doing. Not sure if I should grab the Spitfire, though. Um, if uh, I'm gonna be grabbing a World War II bird, it's either that one or the Fugulf. And I haven't really decided which one. Spitfire is more classic, but the Fugulf... Well, it's um, appealing for a lot of reasons. Okay, so we are closing in on L1, 15 kilometers, and closing. We'll locate the landing site, and once we have it, we will fly it over, and then we will head in for landing. I think that's uh, the airstrip right ahead, but uh, I could be wrong. Uh, it looks like it. But we can't come in from this angle either way, since... Uh, the taxiway is like formed a circle, so we better come in from the other direction, from the water. Yeah, distance confirms that is indeed the estrip. Visual checks out, we are inbound. Gears down, retrim. Wheels are confirmed down. Plane is in landing mode, slowing down, and reverser ready. Hopefully, this uh, rather sharp turn will also help us in slowing down the airplane sufficiently. Coming in for landing. Radar confirms we are close to the ground. Reverser is confirmed. Ready? Set. Go! Looks like that ship is uh, still wanting us dead because it's still shooting at us. Airfield 1-1. Taxi to parking area. Copy, Mouth. 
Hartus, we will be taxiing to the parking area at this time over. So we might as well take a closer look at the airstrip by taking the long way around. I have to say that I w kinda wish it was more populated, but at this I can understand if they go for a less is more approach and let people decorate it, you know, themselves. But still, it feels kinda empty. But the tractor marks are or the driving marks and stuff like that, that is actually a really nice detail. But it's also a bit tricky to um, judge if this is currently a uh, allied or Axis airfield. It might be that they're keeping it vague, just in case you want to um, equip the airfield yourself or stuff like that. That is at least what I would do in this situation. So, almost at the hangar. And we are here. Well, that was a nice flight around Normandy, wouldn't you say? And our plane is back safe and sound in the hangar. And I'm not really sure what to make of this terrain, really. But I don't regret my purchase, and I suppose that's the important thing. 